both of them that you can be here today to share their happiness on the occasion of their marriage. Now marriage means a commitment to developing cooperation, friendship and of course mutual respect. It calls for honesty, patience and above all a good That's sense that. of humour. But a good marriage is where oh, each partner cares for the that. other and supports them in everything that they do. It also requires closeness and distance. Closeness for a couple growing together and enough distance to allow each partner to be an individual. And a good partner in such a marriage is loving and caring and above all, a best friend. And it's in this spirit that Simon and Helen are now here before us today. In each other's company, they have found happiness, fulfillment, and of course love. And they now wish to affirm their relationship with this marriage. Now first of all, can I ask, um, who gives Helen's hand in marriage to Simon today? I do. Thank you. Now through the vows that you're both about to make today, you're going to be making a commitment to each other for the rest of your lives. But before I join you in marriage today, I have to remind you of the solemn and the binding character of these vows that you're both about to make today. Because marriage in this country is the union of two people voluntarily entered into to the exclusion of all others. So I'm now going to ask each of you in turn to declare that there's no legal reason why you can't be married to each other today. Starting with you, Simon, if you could say after me, please. I declare I declare that I know of no legal reason that I know of no legal reason why I, Simon William Allen that I, Simon William Allen may not be joined in marriage may not be joined in marriage to Helen Jane Crossland to Helen Jane Crossland Helen, if you could say please I declare I declare that I know of no legal reason that I know no, of no legal reason why I, Helen Jane Crossland why I, Helen Jane Crossland may not be joined in marriage may not be joined in marriage to Simon William Allen to Simon William Allen and now I'm going to ask you both a very important question I hope you've been practising the answer Simon, do you in the presence of this company promise to remain loving, faithful and loyal to Helen throughout your life together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Helen, do you in the presence of this company promise to remain loving, faithful and loyal to Simon throughout your married life together? I do. <laughs> 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 and now, um, I'd like to invite Lindsay up to do a reading for us, very appropriate for the day, called Love Monkey. <laughs> Lindsay? Oh, there she is. You want to be fair, would you? Yeah. Thank you. It was once custom that every monkey would carve himself a wooden heart, and the heart that Love Monkey carved was the most beautiful of all. Its contours were soft and rounded like an ancient pebble sculpted by the ocean. Its surface was smooth and shiny like liquid silk. 
and it shone as bright as a ruby in the desert sun. Take your hearts with you wherever you go, said their teacher. Nurture them as a mother nurtures her newborn baby. For when you want to give yourself fully, your heart is the only one true gift you will have. That night, Love Monkey had a dream. He dreamt of a monkey whose smile lit up his soul like sunshine. He held out his heart to her, so radiant, so splendid, and so new. She took him in her arms, and he felt truly, perfectly at peace. When Love Monkey awoke, he resolved that from that day forward, he would search for his dream monkey until he could stand before her and give her his perfect heart. He travelled through deserts and climbed over mountains. He trekked across forests and sailed many oceans. Love Monkey looked after his heart as best he could, but the storms that he endured on his travels chipped away at its surface and with each new adventure, reshaped it. By the time he arrived on the last distant shore, his heart was so changed by the patina of time that it barely resembled his old heart at all. And then he saw her. Standing before him, as radiant and as beautiful as the sunshine, was his dream monkey. At first he could not speak, but then from somewhere deep inside him, he found a voice. I have traveled the world all over to find you and I give you my heart, he said. But now that I'm finally with you, I see how foolish I have been. You are so beautiful, so perfect, and my heart that was once smooth, so bright and so new, is now not something I could even bring myself to show you. And he turned to go. Let me see it, said Dream Monkey. She took his heart out and held it up to the light. Nothing to me is more beautiful. Every physio tells a story. Every blemish makes you more real. All my life I've been waiting for a heart like this, a heart that tells the truth. Come here, she said, I have something for you too. And in her hand was a tiny golden heart. It was as worn and as scratched as Love Monkey's own. And it was the most precious thing he had ever seen. <coughs> Love Monkey put his arms around her and they held each other for a long, long time. I shall treasure this heart for as long as I live, said Dream Monkey running her fingers over its rigid and dimpled surface. Then they looked into each other's eyes, feeling the joy of the truth in their souls for the first time they began to laugh. And often they still sit, holding each other's hearts in their warm hands, lifting them to the light and laughing, always laughing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And now the very solemn moment has come when Helen and Simon are going to make their marriage contract. And this is legally going to join them as husband and wife. And you're both about to take into your care now the person you love the most. So if I can start again with you, Simon, if you could say after me, say to Helen. I, Simon. I, Simon. Take you, Helen. Take you, Helen. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Helen, if you could say to Simon. I, Helen. I, Helen. Take you, Simon. Take you, Simon. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And in the presence of your family and your friends here today, do you promise to love, respect and cherish each other? Will you comfort and support each other in times of need and share your laughter in times of joy? And will you stay together as a partnership for the rest of your lives. Now, Simon and Helen have chosen to give and receive a wedding ring today as a token of their marriage. And the giving and receiving of a wedding ring is a very ancient and traditional form of sealing a wedding contract you're about to make. Because a wedding ring is an unbroken circle, no beginning and no end, and it signifies unending and everlasting love. So, Greg, have you got a ring, please? Or... Thank you. Thank you. Give that to me. Yeah. Would you like to put that on her and say to her, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And faithfulness. And faithfulness. And as a token. And as a token. Of the commitment we have made today. Of the commitment we have made today. Helen, would you like to say to Simon, thank you for my beautiful ring, 
Thank you for my beautiful I promise to love you. <laughs> I promise to love you. Through the difficult and easy times. <clears throat> Through the difficult and easy times. And we'll love you always. And we'll love you always. Now, Simon and Helen, hopefully this day will form a milestone in your lives and you'll look back on it with love and happiness as the start of the new phase of your life together. You've made all the declarations now required by law and you've made a solemn and binding contract in front of your witnesses, your family and your friends and you've given and received a wedding ring as a token of your love and commitment to each other. So it now gives me the greatest pleasure to announce that legally you are now husband and wife. Would you like to give each other your first married kiss?